protection of the weak, defiance of the strong. This is not Islam now. It's pre-Islamic tribal Bedouin culture, the Jahiliya. Uh, what? Well, it's in the book, but I said defiance of the strong. There's no honor. There's no honor. There's no virtue in defying a weak person. <laughs> what does that tell about? It doesn't tell you anything. Anybody can defy a weak person. It's, uh, defying Arnold Schwarzenegger or somebody. Uh, you know, defiance of someone strong. That tells what you're made out of. That gives you your, that, that's the test of your mettle. As I said, it's on, in fact, we say people beat up on weak people. That's just cowards, we think. So defiance of the you know, protection of the weak, defiance of the strong. Uh, I was telling you before, uh, these aren't written in stone like the Ten Commandments. These are just observations from the literature and the value system of the time, what the rule was. Uh, honoring the bond of hospitality. We spoke about, or the, or the obligation of hospitality. We spoke about the hospitality uh, um, custom in the uh, Arab world, if not the Islamic world. Protection of guests, for instance. I told you about how I felt when I visited certain people, if they broke bread with me, that I knew I could be, uh, have a feeling of fair, uh, maybe not nowadays with terrorism where everyone's threatened, but the old days, I could have a feeling of some security. They wouldn't let, they wouldn't want dishonor to fall on them. That something happened to me under their roof. Uh, they would protect me, and the obligation uh, was three days in the normal, customary tradition. Uh, how did this happen? I don't know where this came from. Just, just normative custom. Later, actually. The same people who emphasize this speak of Sunnah. Sunnah really is normative custom. So it tells you something about Sunnis. Because we'll get a Sunni Islam, and it, uh, it's not going to be, uh, is there an end here? I don't know, no, that's custom. I don't know if there's an end there. I think there is. Uh, in any case, um, we're going to speak about the Sunnah of the Prophet. And in Sunnism, the Sunnah of the Prophet, as it develops out of what will be called the Hadith, a kind of literature about the Prophet, what he did, said, acted, and was supposed to have done in, in various circumstances, uh, becomes the Sunnah, becomes the Sunnah for Muslims, and they imitate the Prophet in their activity from the Sunnah, and that's why they're called Sunnis. They follow the Sunnah of the Prophet. So, it, but originally, it was the custom. The word came from custom. In the pre-Islamic Arabs, it was custom. And um, one of the uh, famous scholars in this field, uh, a guy called Goltz here, a Hungarian scholar in the 19th century, he said that originally Sunnah meant beaten track in the desert. Basically the way, the way of the ancestors. The track the camel and the caravans made. The, the track that was walked over, over and over again, so that it was a beaten path. That's the, what Sunnah originally meant. And so this is the customary, you say, we're in three days, it wasn't written by Moses and Sinai. It's just a, a beaten path that was accepted and followed. Now, again, I'm off the subject, but it helps you maybe relate to some of this stuff. There was a writer, again, late 19th century. Travels in Arabia Desert. This guy was an incredible, crazy Englishman, centric Englishman, who actually went, he wanted to go and 
trace Saban inscriptions in the desert. Uh, but he actually went on his own into the Arabian Peninsula in the late 1870s period. And uh, with nothing, with nothing, except some letters from some important uh, Ottoman officials further north, which wouldn't help him very much, except in some circumstances. And a gun that he had around his, uh, his neck under his garments that he had on the back helped him come to very bad situation when he finally got to Mecca and they discovered it and took it from him. Uh, uh, but other than that, nothing. And um, he describes one episode where he knew his life, his safety depended on this hospitality from people who wanted to kill him and others who were out for some reason after him, didn't like foreigners at that time. The Arabian <coughs> Peninsula, Bin Laden, for instance, still doesn't like foreigners in the Arabian so to be alone at that time by yourself in the sea of Wahhabism. Wahhabis is the kind of uh, religion that uh, is uh, characteristic of the Arabian Peninsula more recently under the Sauds and since the 1700s. Something that these other movements of Islam, uh, Bin Laden and so on, grow out of. Probably there's other apes there. Wahhabis, Thomas. It's a